since the agreement the president and I reached this summer, whatever I decide, the club is protected ahead of the challenges to come. That is the most important thing. Back in 2022, I did not know all the way up until May. If I knew what I wanted to do, I should not drag things out. That would make no sense. I haven't made any decision on my future. I didn't make a choice. Nobody at the club is talking about my situation as it interests nobody. But it interests us. <laughs> what did you make of it, Diggy? Oh, it's just more un uncertainty, really. I feel like I've spent most of my adult life talking about <laughs> yeah. Kylian Mbappe potentially <laughs> leaving PSG. Um, and I, I, again, he holds all the power, doesn't he, mm. really? I think Real Madrid have reportedly set a deadline of mid-January for him to decide because they want to know whether they need to start targeting other strikers ahead of this summer. They do have Endrick arriving, but uh, with Hosselu, you know, deep into his 30s, with Benzema having left, there is an Mbappe-shaped hole down the middle. Mbappe has you know, said in the past that he prefers playing off the wing. He likes to be more generally involved in play. Mm. But Real Madrid have been fairly frugal in the last few years. Prior to this summer, they made a 257 million euro net profit on the three previous years. And I think that was partly down to the fact they'd seen Barcelona overspend for so many years, the fact they needed to uh, rebuild the Santiago Bernabeu, and the fact they wanted to get Mbappe, who's always suggested that if he was to leave PSG, Real Madrid would be his preferred destination. So I'm looking forward to hopefully a conclusion of the Mbappe saga mm -hmm. at some stage in 2024. Where do you see his future? Yeah, Real Madrid, it has to be, I think. You know, he's just made for that club. He's such a top talent. He is a Galactico, isn't he? And I think he would fit in perfectly at the Bernabeu. They, I think, you know, European football much better than me, Doogie, but I think they're looking for that star striker, aren't they? Ahead of Bellingham, we know what brilliant season Bellingham's had for them, the impact he's had there. But just think about the impact Mbappe would have in that league for Real Madrid. He just fits the bill there so perfectly. Of course, there's this feeling isn't it, that he's a Paris Saint-Germain. The goal, of course, is the Champions League. Real Sociedad they've got in the last 16. So another shot at going through there. But we've seen how many times they've tripped over mm. in those knockout rounds in the Champions League and not quite got to that final step and lifting the trophy and fulfilling that, that dream of theirs. And it is Mbappe's dream, I think, to win that with PSG. But it, it's looking unlikely for me that that's really going to happen. As you say, I think it's got to a crunch point now. He's talking about it dragging on. It's got to come to a conclusion very soon, I think. And I think it will be Real Madrid this summer for Mbappe. And he's at a perfect age as well, just turned 25 as well. But do we see at any point in his career maybe coming to the Premier League? I mean, you can never say never. I mean, he grew up with Cristiano Ronaldo posters on his wall playing for Real Madrid. So that does feel like the dream destination. He's made you know, some compliments to Liverpool in the past and Jurgen Klopp's style mm. of play, etc. But they've got Luis Diaz on the left wing. Uh, they've invested in Nunes and Gakpo in central areas in recent years. They've still got Diogo Jota on the left wing. So in many ways, they don't really need him unless Salah was to leave in the summer and then you're playing him on the right, which isn't his preferred position. But to mm. be honest, I think if, if money was no object, obviously any team in the world would love to have him. Um, but unfortunately, his, his wages are going to cost a, a lot, a lot of money. I mean, he, in 2022, when he agreed that deal to Real Madrid before it collapsing, uh, it was 130 million euros as a signing on fee. And it was a contract annually of, I think, 26 million euros as well, which would you know, be the highest earner by far at Liverpool. So, yeah, we'll see what happens there. But at the moment, it feels like Real Madrid or, uh, or potentially extending his deal at PSG in 2024. It'd be a complete transformation in tactics mm. from Liverpool, wouldn't it, to spend that sort of money on a superstar A-lister. It's just not the way they've gone about their business under Jurgen Klopp. If we just look at this summer, yes, they had a £111 million bid for Caicedo, accepted, and of course that move didn't go through. So the money, I think, is there. There's, there is big money at Liverpool to spend if they want to on the right player at the right moment. I just don't see how that fits in with this Liverpool 2.0 that Klopp's building and developing. He's bringing in young players and getting the most out of the resources he's got there. I just think that would look really strange if suddenly Mbappe arrived at Anfield and came to City. Like, we'd love to see it, wouldn't we? But it just doesn't seem like it quite fits the formula that they've got there at Liverpool.